Hello and welcome to Basic Medical Sciences. If this is your first time, please make sure you subscribe so that you won't miss any of our latest videos. In this video, we are talking about the paramyx of viruses. Paramyx of viruses are negative sense single stranded RNA viruses, and in this series, we are representing them using the moon. They are enveloped viruses, so here is the envelope. And they have a helical capsid. And here is the helix shape. But guys, this is not a DNA virus. It's an RNA virus. This is only for representation. These viruses are non-segmented. And what it means is that they are antigenically stable. And in this family, we have about five medically important viruses. Parainfluenza, RSV, measles, mumps, and human metanumovirus. So the main way of transmission of these viruses is through respiratory droplets. Right, let's look at these viruses one by one. Let's start with measles. Measles also goes with the name rubiola, right? It's also called rubiola. And don't confuse this with the rubella and roseola. Those are completely different viruses. Right, and it, it is three stages. Right, the first stage is called a prodromal stage and is characterized by uh, three C's first, cough, coryza, and conjunctivitis. And also, it is characterized by high fever, like the temperature will be above 40 degrees Celsius. The pathognomic sign for measles is called coplic spots. Right, so these are. Uh, tiny whitish or blue gray spots on the buccal mucosa right and they are on on red background okay let me show you these things now the second stage is called the exanthem phase right or rash phase right and it appears one to two days after after the inanthem okay the inanthem is uh, that those complex uh, spots, right? Uh, and it's actually the thematous maculopapular rash, which is partially confluent. Um, and this rash usually begins like from the face and frequently from uh, behind the ears along the hairline, right? So we can say this rash actually descends like from the head moving down uh, to the extremities and in most cases, it spares the palms and the soles. Uh, then the last stage is a uh, recovery stage. And this stage uh, is characterized by what? By cough. And this cough can persist even for about one week, right? And it can actually be uh, the last remaining symptom, right? And now I need to tell you one more thing, which is very important. In a rubella video, I said uh, rubella causes a three-day rash, right? Rubiola or measles actually cause a six-day rash, right? So uh, ru uh, rubella, three days, measles, six days. In the previous video on orthomyx of viruses, I introduced uh, two virulence vectors, hemagglutinin and neuraminidis, right? So uh, in paramyx of viruses, all of them in general, uh, we can say like there are three uh, virulence factors, hemagglutinin, neuraminidase, and fusion protein, right? But in measles, we have uh, hemagglutinin and fusion protein. We don't have neuraminidase, right? So the major complications of uh, measles include bacterial superinfection, uh, viral giant cell pneumonia, meningoencephalitis, and subacute sclerosing panencephalitis, right? So for measles, we actually have a vaccine, right? It's an MMR vaccine, which is life attenuated, right? And it includes measles, mumps, and rubella, right? So this vaccine should not be given to uh, pregnant women, right? It's contraindicated. Uh, do you know that there is actually a vitamin which we can uh, give as a supplement to reduce morbidity and mortality, right? And the vitamin is vitamin A. 
Now the next bug we are going to talk about is mumps virus, right? Mumps in general uh, replicate in, in glands, right? In salivary glands. In most cases, it's parotid gland um, and it's usually bilateral, right? So there will be inflammation of or both uh, parotid glands, right? And uh, the complications include ochitis, uh, aseptic meningitis, encephalitis and acute pancreatitis and as you can see on ochitis right uh, it it occurs like in less than 10 percent of the cases and mostly in what in males and uh, who are post pubertal and one more thing is uh if if there is bilateral ochitis uh there is risk of infertility but you know those cases are very rare Right, uh, again on uh, virulence factors, mumps has all the three, right? It is hemagglutinin, neuraminidase, and fusion protein. And again, our MMR vaccine, right? Now let's talk about the respiratory syncytial virus, right? So this virus mainly affects infants less than six months of age. It attached to the G protein on the uh, respiratory epithelial cells, right? So it's the point of attachment. And RSV is actually the number one cause of pneumonia and uh, bronchiolitis in infants, right? Okay, and again, on virulence factors, we have all of them. Um, hemagglutinin, neuraminidase, and fusion protein. And I just want to take this opportunity to tell you uh, that we can inhibit this uh, fusion protein uh, using a drug called palivizumab, right? Palivizumab. Okay, let's conclude this video by talking about the parainfluenza viruses. Parainfluenza have four subgroups. Parainfluenza 1, 2, 3, and 4. Parainfluenza 1 and 2 in general they cause infections of the upper respiratory tract. Parainfluenza 3 cause the infections of the lower respiratory tract. And parainfluenza 4, it's very rare, so we can just say it causes mild respiratory symptoms. All right. So parainfluenza causes a disease called croup, right? AKA acute laryngotracheal bronchitis. Right, and this disease has a specific sign. It's like it's called a seal like backing cough, right? Characterized by hoarseness and mild inspiratory stridor due to subglottic narrowing. Right, so okay, I'm going to explain this narrowing in just a moment. For now, let me remind you uh, on virulence factors. We actually have all of them hemagglutinin neuraminidase and fusion protein right on x-ray this subglottic narrowing appears as a specific sign known as a steeple sign so this is actually the, the narrowing of subglottic region and for orientation this is the right side this is the left side Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please make sure you subscribe, uh, give it thumbs up and leave a comment on the comment section. Tell me what you think. Uh, and also just to click the notification bar uh, so that you receive the notification whenever I upload a new video. Until next time, head bowed.